want to talk to you today about positivity, happiness, and uh, people feeling good in the workplace and um, how we can enable them to do that. Because uh, our view is that happy, engaged, and smiling people are much more productive and more engaged as a workforce. So, subject of my presentation today. So today is a good day to smile and to mean it. Um, I'll do some introductions of myself in a minute. We'll do some questions at the end. So if you've got anything you want to ask me, we can do that at the end. So first of all, I just want you to imagine just one person in your team, the people you work with, just smiling and happy with not a care in the world. And then if you take that to the next level, if you think of everyone in your organization, everyone smiling and happy, hundreds and thousands of you, as far as we're concerned at Good Habits, happy people are the best people for any organization. So at Good Habits, we want people to feel good about themselves at all times. Because they've learned something new, because they're on the right track, or because they're just doing a great job for you. And it's working, so I've just got a few examples for you here. And these are real life people that are part of our business. So this is Ellen, 35, and her team in her business had become a little sluggish, but thanks to our Scrum course, she's managed to get things back online. This is Maggie in the middle here. Um, she was fed up with her company's very boring meetings, so thanks to our Exciting's meetings course, the boardroom is now strictly off limits. And this is Ahmed, 27, he's a nurse. Um, he decided it was time to take better control over some of his habits, and now, thanks to our online training course, Stick to the Plan, he's managed to be a non-smoker for at least six months. This is one of our customer support reps, Simon. He's the guy at the back, by the way. The guy in front is his dad. And using our time management course, he's managed to get control of his time and have some time to spend with the ones he loves. This is an intern, Rita. She's 25. Initially, she struggled to find her feet in the organization. But using our I Feel Good course, she's managed to worry less, and she's a little more in control of her life. This gentleman here is Topher, he's a restaurant manager, he's 38, and ever since he finished our course of, oh yes, it's the stress, his patrons don't feel that they're on the wrong side of him all the time. He's now much more in control, friendly, and composed. This gentleman is Russell, he's a bus driver. He used to have some really bad habits, but using our Vitality course, he's managed to kick most of that habit. Uh, fortunately, he still has most of his friends because for us, it's all about balance is what we believe. And finally, these two characters that always make me laugh. So this is Oliver and Noah, and apparently they're really happy because they completed our Excel course. I didn't put this presentation together. So all these people have great jobs at hospitals, public sector organizations, banks, you name it. And it's our mission to help them all become the best version of themselves. All of these organizations you see up here have already put their trust in us. And because the training methods are inspiring, accessible, and entertaining, that's going to bring us to the heart of today's topic. So today is a good day to smile and be happy. So welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Steve Humphries. I'm the country director for Good Habits here in the UK. And today we're going to address the importance of positivity. We all know that a smile gets us what we want in life, and it's true in our professional lives too. So how exactly can we use optimism to change our workplace for the better? Today we're going to address five key questions. Why is learning with a smile more effective than being serious? What does positive psychology have to say about learning? Is there a switch, an on switch for optimism in your organization? What does it take for you to say yes to online training today? And are you ready to take the first happy step today? So let's tackle that first question. So why is learning with a smile more effective than being serious? Well, theory says that using humor in a learning environment does a number of things. It improves our memory, 
It enhances our understanding of things. It boosts our attention. And it stimulates our creativity. But lists like this can sometimes be a little bit boring. So sometimes we need to use different things to try and enhance what we're trying to teach people. So I'm going to take you through a few examples. Bear with me on these. So, for example, if I tell you that the first moon landing was on the 20th of July 1969, that's 50 years ago. So as a fact, that's pretty clear and not particularly memorable. But if I say to you, but if I say to you that the movie, the classic Christmas movie of Home Alone was released closer to the moon landing than it was today, suddenly that fact becomes more interesting. This rather complicated formula here represents the rapid nucleation of carbon dioxide gas bubbles participating out of a solution. Complex stuff. If, however, I show you this little video, hopefully you'll get it a little more. So this is the Diet Coke and Mentos experiment, which relies on putting a Mentos mint in the top of a bottle of Coke, and that's what it does. So making something fun is also a great way to get people to change behavior. Often we don't think about what we're doing, although sometimes we really should. So just for a minute, try crossing your arms for me, any way you like. Sorry if you're holding a drink. And then take a second and just switch arms. So it's not as easy as you think. It makes us think. And what that demonstrates, really, is that sometimes it's important to address the way we do things in a professional environment every day without actually thinking. This next little video demonstrates, again, how we can, how we can show a quick example of how we can activate people to do something that they wouldn't normally do. So what we're stressing here is that we normally do things in a certain way without thinking about it. But actually, if we do something very simple, we can change the way that people think. Now, my apologies in advance for this next one. I do work for a Dutch company. And I'm I'm occasionally, the Dutch sense of humor is a little closer to the bone than perhaps us Brits are used to. But my Dutch colleagues enjoy this one. It's very memorable. So enjoy. This is where you're at. <laughs> So, does that commercial go too far? Well, who am I to say? But what it definitely will do is make you remember it. And uh, every time I present this, and done it a few times over the last year or so, I always get loads of tweets and LinkedIn mentions about just that aspect. And I sometimes worry whether people remember any of the rest of the presentation in just that piece. But there you go. So adding a quirk to whatever it is that you want people to learn helps. And I'm not talking about belly laughs. It's just a surprising turn or happy example that can do the trick. So humor, we know, activates the brain's um, dopamorphine system. And it's important for both our goal-oriented motivation and for our long-time memory. And that's why at Good Habits, our aims, our aims in our learning and courses is to make them happy and put a smile on people's face. So let's take a look at some of the courses and their formats.
So let's move on to the second question, which is, what does positive psychology have to say about learning? So psychology is a relatively new field of study that was first introduced in the 90s, and it studies the strengths that make us flourish. So we all want to live meaningful lives and get the most out of ourselves, and we all want to feel good about what we do, both at home and at work. And for many of us, learning plays an important part in making life worth living. And so at Good Habits, we aim to bring the most inspiring approach to learning for your organisation. So for us, it's not about what you can't do yet, what you don't do yet, and what you don't know yet. What we're interested in is a growth mindset, a mindset that says, I can get smarter, a strength-based approach to learning. So as Arthur Ashe, the three times Grand Slam winner once said, start where you are, use what you have, and do what you can. Science tells us that we can learn anything we set our minds to, so we use methods that make people learn in ways that work for them, one step at a time. Happy, healthy, and confident employees whose achievements, disciplines, and skills are acknowledged are gonna be far more productive members of your workforce than they were before. All this might seem a little bit oversimplified for those of you that are not born optimists, but don't worry, we're here to help. Our online course library has ample helpful topics to choose from, all of them to make you a happier and a healthier person. Let's move on to the third question. So is there an on switch for optimism in your organization? Of course, with good habits, we couldn't be where we are today if we didn't have the right course content and our course content wasn't positive, challenging and fun to work with. But for us, we believe that there's one aspect of the workplace learning that's wildly underestimated. And for, that, for us, that's what we call coaching. Just like many of you have been a bit reluctant uh, sometimes to share compliments with employees, an employee will be reluctant to start learning if you don't encourage them first. And you might not feel like encouraging your, your team if we don't motivate you to do so at the same time. So to help you and your employees, we always allocate one of our experienced and skilled coaches to all our clients from the outset. You could say the coaches are the backbone of our business. They're fully committed to motivating, stimulating, and encouraging your organization to implement our courses effectively and make them a success. So just think for a minute how we behave online with our everyday, with our LOLs, our likes, and our loves. What we're trying to do is to bring some of this positivity to the world of work. So in any organization, we find you can divide your employees into roughly three groups, and these percentages will vary. So 25% of them, they don't need any motivation. Um, they're, they're ready to learn and improve themselves, and they just get on with it. And in our experience, you don't need to worry about them too much. There's another 25% that don't really care. They don't want to learn, and they don't want to better themselves. Again, in our view, it's probably best not to worry about them too much. We're not going to actually make much impact on them. But for us, it's the largest group, about 50%, and they're open to new ideas, but they'll probably struggle to get started by themselves. And these are the ones for whom coaching is an excellent tool. Whilst we accept that these percentages will vary depending on the culture of your organization, we find that the pattern is nearly always the same. Our coaches will work with clients from the outset to establish what the situation is in their particular organization, and we build from there. In order to get people going, simply having their manager ask them to try out an online course just won't work. What we've, pro what, we've, what we've proven with a ton of our systems and techniques is that we can drive the organization and your workplace. We've postcards that we use for moral support all through your business. We've posters which promote our training and the courses and spike the curiosity of your employees. And we've developed plans to create a structure and set goals for every individual in your organization. And that's not all. We set up campaigns and host workshops for you, and we'll stay with you through the entire journey of learning in your business. And we're happy to say that of our 800 plus clients across Europe, 97% of them come back and work with us on the, year, on the following year. So we have a 97% repeat rate. On to the fourth question. So what does it take for you to say yes to online learning? At Good Habits, we've taken stock of what people want to learn about and what skills are most useful in the workplace, and for that matter, skills that are useful in life. 
And we've divided our training courses into eight categories that we believe appeal to the majority of employees. Our objective is to spark the students' intrinsic motivation because without the will to learn and grow, you won't actually grow. It's as simple as that. So let's have a look at the categories that we offer. Personal strength, commercial skills, safety and well-being, communications and language, productivity, management and teamwork, inspiring leadership, and digital skills. So the first one is a given. Helping your employees to work on their personal strengths is a prerequisite for any successful organization. Who wouldn't want a workforce to become stronger and stronger? And I'm sure amongst these courses, you can see something that's good for yourself or good for some of your colleagues. For managers and teams alike, it's vital to keep on top of the ever-changing commercial environment. Commercial awareness will help your employees make sensible, well-informed decisions. Anyone who needs to brush up on their elevator pitch, get an upper hand in negotiations with the courses that you'll need here. Safety and well-being. People need to feel safe and secure at all times, both at home and at work, online and offline. So a good habits with the right training courses to keep everyone secure and healthy all of the time. Communications and language. If there's an issue in the workplace, can, employee, can employees speak freely? Good communications is essential in any organisation, and that goes beyond having a chat at the coffee machine. Our courses keep your communications on point at all times. Another hot item in the workplace is productivity, particularly here in the UK. You'll get your teams to step up a gear effortlessly with our helpful training courses in this area. Get everyone to share their opinion, be clear on the organisational mission, make sure everyone is assigned the proper role and have clear timelines. Communications, be fair and address problems. Management and teamwork involves a lot of this and at Good at Habits we understand that. A good leader is not a manager who tells people what to do. As Simon Sinek once said, when people are financially invested, they want to return, but when people are emotionally invested, they want to contribute. Inspiring leadership has to be at the heart of any strong organisation. And finally, digital skills. In almost every aspect of the workplace that we're currently dealing with, digital skills fall upon us every day. Employees need to stay ahead of the digital revolution. At Good, at Good Habits, we're constantly developing the tools they need, be it for Facebook, LinkedIn, or kicking social media altogether. In fact, I was talking to someone earlier, we have a course coming out next month, which is a direct request from our clients, as most of our courses are, which is called Fake News. Um, we've taken the title deliberately from topics in the media at the moment, but if you think about it, we rely on our employees on an almost daily basis to go onto the internet, find information, research information. We give them very little guidance about how to verify that information, where's safe to go and where's not safe to go. And our course, Fake News, is designed to give the employees the skills that they need to verify the information that, they, that they're finding on the internet. So finally, you know, you know a happy workforce is a valuable workforce. If you give them the opportunity to learn and develop themselves, they'll be more engaged, more motivated, and more productive. So at Good Habits, we offer all the right positive learning environment to make people and your people and your organization move to the next level. So here's a short recap of, of what we offer. Oh!
So, so a lot of people refer to us as the Netflix of training, and that's because of the model we use. So we have over 80 courses in English across the categories that we just talked about. And we have seven other European languages as well, which are all available. We provide our platforms on an unlimited access for all employees' basis for a, a low cost annual fee. Um, we've extensive experience in the public sector, not specifically in the UK. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we're a Dutch company. It's interesting that 70% of healthcare employees in Holland have access to our, play, our training. Um, in Germany, we're also um, uh, deeply integrated with most of the healthcare organisations in that country as well.